All right, folks. Welcome back to patch 1.6.1 on the common test server. And for this video, we'll take a closer look at the upcoming rank battle mode's final reward. It is the Kampfpanzer 50T, a special tier 9 German medium tank. So this vehicle is basically a mishmash of the playstyles of the E50 with the Leopard prototype. It also has a pike-shaped nose for the upper plate that is actually thicker than the IS-8 or the T-10 heavy tank. So this vehicle actually has armor and it is pretty modern looking. <laughs> it has a modern-esque of a gunner's scope or sights. It has infrared searchlights, presumably. It has camo nets that I think are mainly cosmetics or aesthetics that don't actually serve as camo, but it has a anti-aircraft mini turret at the back with about 50 calibers, right? That kind of looks like 50 cals, but that's fun. It also looks like a Projecto 65's hull, but it has a pike-shaped nose and a pretty thick upper plate with a thick turret front. So this vehicle actually has armor. Now let's see how good the stats are, but here are the original stats from the Super Test server. Wargaming has actually nerfed this vehicle in terms of DPM. They nerfed the DPM by 200 from 2300 to 2100. So apparently it was already kind of good with below average DPM and they already nerfed it a little bit more. So okay, but it has a crew of 4, commander, gunner, loader, and driver. So it fits the leopard line pretty well. You are missing a radio operator if you're training your E-50 crews, but eh, it's alright. It has 105mm, it has a 900 horsepower engine, and let's see how good the actual stats are. So, it has very high penetration for a tier 9, 268, so it is the same type of a gun or penetration for a tier 10, only 320 alpha, so... That's a little bit shaky, but you do have penetration, so this vehicle is mostly focused on sniping and penetrating. Now accuracy is very good, 0.32, so I mean it could be better at 0.3 or 0.2-ish, but that's still fairly, de uh, fairly decent. It is 1.9 seconds of aim time, so very quick to aim, 8 degrees of gun depression, 17 elevation, that's workable, it's fine, it's also pretty decent, slightly above average. Turret Traverse is below average at about 36.5 degrees per second, so it could be better, but it's not terrible. Reloads every 8.5 seconds or so with a rammer and vents, and DPM is only 2100, so gun is fairly workable. It is mostly focused on penetrating and hitting your targets, rather than the DPM factor or the alpha factor, but it has a gold shell of high explosive anti-tank at 310 millimeters, and standard shell is APCR. So, it's actually APDS. Really? Discarding stable rounds. But, yeah, this gun is fairly workable. It's not meant for DPSing or just basically ripping people into shreds, but it's meant for punching holes, and it's good enough. Let's see the armor of this thing. Now, it has fairly high health for medium. 1750 that is that is pretty good that is the same as the e50 levels of health and it has 120 millimeter pike shape upper plate with 250 for the turret front so here is the actual turret and whole armor profile with the actual effective armor so as you can see upper plate is about 230 millimeters effective on the cheeks auto bounce ish 250 ish so it is a pike shaped hull and <laughs> you don't have to angle this vehicle and you shouldn't angle this vehicle because side armor is garbage <laughs> side armor is only 40 millimeters now granted you do have side skirts but it's not gonna help <laughs> side skirts of 20 millimeter you could bounce a few shots if they're shooting high explosive anti-tank rounds or just basically APCR shells at a critical angle, but I highly would not recommend you 
using the side armor to side scrape. Lower plate is about 175 to 170 ish, so lower plate is still a weak spot, but upper plate is more or less like a light, heavy tank. Turret front, 250 rounded, it's about 300 millimeters effective. That's pretty good. There is a cupola, but it's very small, so don't even think about shooting the cupola right here for the commander. Now, there is a weak spot, and that is the gunner sights. So, the weak spot gunner sight is 200 millimeters. And it's fairly large, but you can still rotate the turret and throw off the shot, so it's not that bad. And granted, if you miss, it's auto bounce. It's pretty thick turret. <laughs> There is somewhat of a weak spot above the searchlights. 240, that's not really weak though. So, alright, that's fine. Let's see how thick the driver hatch is. It's a 60mm driver hatch, so you will auto bounce most of the shots landing here if they're shooting directly onto the driver hatch. So, unless you have a very high penetration of a gun or high caliber of a gun, you will go through the driver hatch, but this is, this is supposed to be auto bounce zone. So overall, frontal armor is actually very decent for a medium. This is a medium tank. It's not heavy. Now side armor, however, is garbage. <laughs> 40 millimeter for the hull sides and the turret sides. That is god awful. <laughs> turret sides and turret rear are, yeah, below 40. Oh, my hull rear is 20, Jesus. If you get hit by artillery shells, and the artillery shell hits the turret roof, or the hull roof, you will be likely penetrated. And you will be dealt like 1000 alpha from the high explosives, probably knocking out like 2 crew members in the process. Oh my jeez. So, other than the front, the armor is crap, but you have to rely on the frontal armor. Don't side scrape, don't do the, all the fancy shenanigans of reverse side scraping and other crap. Just use the turret armor, use the upper plate, and go haul down. Use the 8 degrees of gun depression to your advantage. And try to hide the gunner sights if you can, but it has the health. So mobility wise, it's a 50 ton vehicle moving at 18 horsepower per ton ratio. It's 60 kilometers per hour top speed with 20 in reverse. That is pretty good to ram stuff. So, it's like the E50. If this thing is catching up speed and ramming towards a light tank or other mediums, it's 50 tons of weight. <laughs> and that's pretty decent too. So, hull traverse, below average for medium, 40 degrees per second. It's not bad, but you have to think about this vehicle as a fat leopard tank with armor. And when you think about it like that way, yeah, it's fairly decent. Concealment, it's actually decent for such a large-esque of a heavy, medium-ish. So, it could conceal pretty well. And view range is 400 meters, so also very good. So overall, this vehicle is like a leopard with an E50. <laughs> and it has armor at the front. The E50 downside is the turret. And you get pinned in the turret mostly with about 220 millimeters of pin. So this turret front is a godsend compared to the E50. Now granted, this vehicle doesn't have DPM as some of the other tier 9 mediums. So it has the gun dispersion shooting out movement and it's not updated on tanks.gg but with the original stats from Tank Inspector, you can see that the dispersion shooting out movement is actually decent. And the only downside is the Alpha, the DPM, and maybe the terrain resistance. It's 0.959 for hard, 1.055 for medium, and 2.11 for soft for all the terrain resistance. And this is more of a large medium tank type of terrain resistance, so it's not that bad. And you have to consider the fact that this is basically a E50 with the Leopard's body. So, overall, I kind of like it. <laughs> so, is it worth spamming Gold Shell in rank battle mode while playing like Super Conquerors and 
Object 268 version number 4 is? Well, I think it is. It depends on how well they change the Chevron system and including more of a different playstyle than aggro. But I think this vehicle is worth it. So as you can see comparing it with other tier 9 mediums, this vehicle has the penetration so it's more of a Centurion-esque or a AMX-30 or Leopard-esque of a playstyle. The only downside is it doesn't have the DPM so it's similar to the Centurion in terms of DPM. So here it is, about the same DPM. Doesn't have as much DPM as the lightly armored Leopard tanks or the AMX-30s but it has the armor to go brawling so you have to consider that fact but it doesn't have the DPM of the lowly armored uh, Type 61 or the AMX 30s so it's more of a mixing the better armored Russian or German-esque with the sniping guns of the lowly armored ones so it's still pretty high in health and turret armor front so it's not as thick as the Centurion in terms of nominal thickness but it's 250 all the way or all the way at the front so pretty wide area and there's only one weak spot and that's the gunner sights so okay but it is 50 tons of weight so obviously it weighs more than the t55s and t54s it weighs more than the type 61s and the amx 30s <laughs> but yeah this thing could go ramming and top speed of 60 means it will catch up to that speed going down a hill and 18 horsepower turn ratio is a lot better than the 14 that's on the E50. So it has the concealment too, the best concealment out of all of the tier 9 mediums. So let's see if I could put a camo on this thing. I could. So basically it will give better camo too and it already has the best camo out of all the tier 9 mediums. Alright, 400 meters of view range, that's good enough and it's already above average so overall how would I rate the Panzer 50T given the fact that it has armor and given the fact that the gun is reliable it has mobility and it has the weight behind it to ram people. Um, If it doesn't have the gunner sight weak spot if it has more DPM, I will actually give it a 9, but there are a few downsides to this vehicle and that is basically the weak spot and the DPM and the alpha, but I still think this is a very solid tank and I will probably give it a 8.5 out of 10. Um, if it has like 2300 DPM, I will give it a 9 out of 10 even with the weak spot, but you have to remember, other than the front of this vehicle, the rest of the armor on the sides and on the rear are <laughs> garbage. If you get hit by artillery shells, you will be pinned. So this armor is sometimes for brawling if you have cover from artillery shells. If you don't, don't stand in a haul down position and try to hold off a large group of enemies because their artilleries will target you and if you get pinned by artillery you will likely get pinned by artillery <laughs> you will likely get pinned by artillery <laughs> only 35 millimeters effective for the hull roof and the turret roof oh man so yeah don't get hit by artillery try to use the armor sparingly but if you have cover this thing could go brawling if you point your front towards the enemy. So overall, I would give it 8.5 out of 10. Um, I might give it 8.75 out of 10, but there are a few factors that's limiting it below 9. So it's still a very decent tank. And is it worth your time? I would say yes. Worth your time to spam gold shell. If you have the money, spam the gold shell. If you don't, just play a little bit more carefully and reserved in rank battle mode. But there you go, folks. The Kampfpanzer 50T. And I am somewhat surprised that Wargaming actually nerfed the DPM. It's originally 2300, and that's already slightly below average. So now it's even below average to that of a heavy tank DPM at tier 9. So. 
Yeah. Well, it is a vehicle for rank battle mode, whereas previously you just get bonds and other stuff. So now you get actual tanks from rank battle mode, and that is pretty decent. So overall, try your luck with the rank battle mode system. If you cannot get it, don't worry about it too much. You already know the weak spots. If you cannot get it, play artillery and just crap on them. <laughs> Mostly tar target Kampf <laughs> Panzer 50Ts with the artillery to <laughs> piss them off. But there you go, folks. The Kampf Panzer 50T, the final reward for rank battle mode in the upcoming season in patch 1.6.1. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.